We know ego is there when we hear something true about ourselves. Something's true, that is a flaw, and it hurts. Sounds like, well, duh, it should hurt. But believe it or not, one of the signs of death to self is that true statements about your flaws are accepted, understood. There's a lot of self-realization. And they don't hurt so much. They don't hurt against some inflated version of yourself you've created. When we fully understand who we are, that we are a speck in the thousands to millions of years the Earth has been around, that we are a short moment. We, when we know that God is the reason we get to heaven <laughs> with our will, God willing, then we know we are flawed and we are when we hear it, it's something we already know. You can feel anger when something that is said about you is wrong or is a false rumor that can hurt when you are trying to be a good person and somebody tries to pin you as bad because you hurt because you're trying to love God and trying to be so good. And maybe hearing that you've still let God down in some way can be painful. But this is not the same as getting angry when hearing one of your flaws. The ego and the self can die in a variety of ways. You may see egos that are well and good in a lot of uh, younger people, but then people who have never lost them. Egos propel us forward, to give us, they give us this temporary material purpose that we're supposed to be very, either very successful or whatever it is. It gives us motivation to do what we think we're meant to do on this earth, to pursue dreams, passions, and goals. It's a sense of importance. The problem is it's usually a little inflated or a lot inflated to give more motivation and more feeling of I'm supposed to do all these things because I am great. I'm supposed to accomplish all these things because I am great. And that propels us forward for a while, but it's just not a fun time when eventually the time comes for that self and that inflated ego to hit reality. And it eventually does. Sometimes it hits it straight on like a train. Sometimes it's very slow and over time. And sometimes the ego is never lost. But when they're criticized, when their faults are criticized, they're just angry and they become very angry and bitter people because their ego, they never let it die. And they never accept the new reality of who they are in the eyes of God. Even Christians and Catholics and even myself have experienced thinking some alternate version of myself was true in the eyes of God. And it is true that God gives us our importance. But it's sometimes very hard to consistently remember that. And it's impossible, I will say, to, on our own, filter out thoughts of ourselves that are inflated and not according to reality. We can't wake up every day and do that perfectly. That is why we put in disciplines like prayer that aren't even disciplines, but they're conversations with God every day. They're not even always scheduled. But it's the fact you wake up every day and log on to God and whatever he has to be done that day. And whatever he wills you to do that day on all the circumstances you are going to come across in the next 24 hours. You log on and say, I am willing to be your hands and feet today. I'm going out into the world. Please conduct my actions and help my will to perform just as Jesus would if he were in this exact situation. That's a prayer. 
a prayer we should pray along with offering up our sacrifices every day, which I try to remember every day to say this prayer. Eternal Father, I offer you the prayers, works, joys, and sufferings of this day in union with every Mass said throughout the whole world today for every single holy soul in purgatory, for sinners everywhere in the universal church and those in my home and my family. Amen. So now in our day, we have logged on and said, God, I am a free agent for you today. I am available and I am willing. And I say yes. Also, for all the inconveniences that are going to happen today, please use them and even make them happen to me so we can save more souls together and show you that mankind is somehow, some way, worth taking another look at to be saved and brought to heaven with you. They said, when one man prays, all of mankind prays. Just like if one monkey solves a Rubik's Cube, that's a step forward for all monkeys. <laughs> we are not monkeys. But when a man prays, one when you pray, it shows that I can pray. I'm capable of that relationship with God, that my neighbor is capable of that relationship with God, and it makes God look even more fondly upon his creation. That is the reality we should have every day. Not one filled with, let's say, what I want to accomplish and what I want to achieve. But I really only have today. I've woken up in today. And that is what I have. And I'm going to give it to God. Or am I going to try and pursue what I want to do and to achieve which will usually require a guarantee of many more days after that. So you're planning. You're like, okay, so I want to accomplish this thing. I want to make this much money, let's say. And I want to achieve this position. That's going to take me, let's say, two years, three years. I'm going to have to do, do uh, make these changes, move to these places. It's good to have a plan um, that revolves around the things that you like because God did build us in a way that we all are different and have different fun preferences in the material world like favorite foods, things that make us happy in regards to hobbies, whether you like sailing or carpentry or whatever it is. He's put those in our heart and it's just the kind of mind that we have that's good at physics or that's good at art and painting or storytelling. And we do indulge in that. And, you know, those are the coins we've been given by God, though. The coins we shouldn't bury in the earth. So we shouldn't just pursue them for ourselves. I had a philosophy professor at Franciscan. He looked like Santa Claus with a cane. And he was French. And he said my name really cool. René. So I loved roll call. <laughs> but he had a couple children baptized by Pope John Paul II. And he taught in the Vatican schools. And now he was very, very old. And he taught philosophy at Franciscan. And he said, Everything without love is a mistake. That's my terrible French accent. He said, Everything done without love is a mistake. And everyone raised their hands. Everything? He said, yes, everything. Everything. You can have things you like that kind of guide the direction of your life. But you must still, and I must still, remember that I wake up to one day. I wake up to one day every day. And I'm not guaranteed 300 more. I'm guaranteed that day. And I must make sure I offer it to God so that whatever happens in it is redeeming to mankind. The, the sacrifice prayer I mentioned. And then that I look up to God in the morning and I say, I'm up. 
I'm ready. I'm willing. S send me out in the world. And I will say good morning to whoever I can. I will let someone in front of me in traffic this morning. I will help someone find their way around a building. I will call grandma today. I will make food for someone. I'm online. I'm connected. I'm connected to a mission that goes directly into eternal time going on up in heaven. I'm connecting to a path. I'm connecting to the little way taken by many saints before. Many unknown ones, many good people, and many known ones too. It is the way, and it's one day at a time. And we must know, and I try, and I try, and I try, to remember that I'm incapable of achieving holiness on my own. I am incapable of achieving true humility on my own. I am incapable of possessing wisdom, and I am incapable of speaking fluently on topics. <laughs> Without praying for those things. Because when you ask for good things like that, God will give them to you. Those are the things we should ask for. We should pray for wisdom, not to be wiser than the man next to us, but to know we are not wiser than the man next to us. And we should pray for humility, so we know where we stand in regards to God and in regards to our neighbor. And when you know where you stand in regards to God and your neighbor, automatically, more is expected of you. To who is given the most, more is expected. So you take then the last seat at the table. You wait to be invited forward if you ever are at all. Some of us never will be invited forward in this world, and that's okay. That's not why you woke up today. One saint said, pray to want, to want, to want, to love God more. Pray to want wisdom. If you don't even feel like you want to ask for it right now, pray to want to want wisdom. Pray to want to ask for humility, because it's hard to ask for. But humility is actually um, a freeing thing. Just like when we learn that we need less material things. Just like when we learn that we can actually fall asleep on the floor and we need not fear losing even our bed. We also can learn in humility that we didn't have to fear in losing our ego and in losing an inflated version of self and in losing our idea of ourselves. You weren't losing yourself when you lose your idea, your idea of yourself. You're gaining the correct and the real one. You are seeing and meeting the real you who is in God and in God's will. And when acting in his will, who he created you to be, just as you were when you were a child, comes forth again. Pray to want to want to be holy, pray to want to want to be a saint. And by being a saint, that means going to heaven. You don't have to want to be a statue in a church one day. In fact, it's probably best not to want that specifically. 
but to want that deeper relationship with God because you know it's fulfilling, because you know it's amazing, because you know it is your final end in the one where you will be the most happy. I promise. I promise that heaven is not just sitting on a cloud with a harp being bored. I promise. I promise that Mary was taken up into heaven, body and soul. I promise her son rose from the dead. And I promise I'm trying to get there too. And I promise there's a place for you. It's waiting and it's currently empty. And it'd be a shame if you didn't show up. You're supposed to. I hope to see all of you there. It might be a big hope to hope. But I hope to hope even more. And you can bet my hope against any hope of anyone who wants harm for your soul. I have more hope in God than what they may hope to, to ruin in you. I hope we can go to confession and see the joy in it and see the suffering of Christ as we walk in and the resurrection as we walk out. And I hope in the Eucharist we see that we are connecting to the bridge between God and man. And by walking over that bridge and receiving communion, we are able to go into heaven. If you're a Protestant, you might not believe that. And I still thank you for coming by the channel and being here. Don't worry, you are welcome here. And lastly, I hope when you go to heaven, that God recognizes you, remembers your voice whenever you had prayed to him, and that his blessed mother also remembers your voice and advocates for you. And I hope that the mercy of God will let you in no matter what you've done. And lastly, lastly, I hope that we can together, while we are on this earth for a short, fleeting time, be at the service of God looking and observant for ways that we can help today. God bless you. God keep you. God have mercy on you and on me. As he waits to, we just have to ask. He will bring good out of anything bad if we ask because he is the source of good. There's so much that lacks goodness around the world, but we can bring goodness into it and we can bring God into it. So if you're going through any tough situation, ask God to bring good out of that tough situation or out of that place or situation where he is currently not present. Bring him into it, and I promise he will bring good out of it. Until next time, thank you for watching.